people. Uh, my name is Greg Marcoux. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Rensselaer. I um, want to welcome you to our chemical engineering webinar for our, our Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering within the School of Engineering here at Rensselaer. Um, just a couple of um, housekeeping notes. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them in the chat on the left side of your screen. It is a moderated chat. Very, It'll be different than you might see on a video game streaming where all the comments will come in at once. We'll do one question at a time just to make sure that we're getting uh, nice, even answers and making sure that students are answered and you can kind of go question, answer, question, answer. Um, so feel free to submit your questions and again, I'll, we'll be answering them throughout the session and then we'll have some time for question and answers at the end. At this point, I will pass it off to my colleagues in chemical and biological engineering with uh, Corey Woodcock. Hi, sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, great to have everyone here. Really, really impressed with this amazing turnout. Hopefully you guys will come up with some questions for us along the way, and we'll be able to answer those questions at the end of this webinar. But today our panelists are here, and I'm gonna let everyone introduce themselves. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chong, and I'm a sophomore uh, chemical engineering major. I'm also part of AKI, and that's the student-run organization here at RPI. And what we do at AKI is we connect students like you to the industry. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Liner. I'm also a sophomore in chemical engineering, and I'm also a part of the AKI board, and I'm specifically responsible for business and alumni relations. So I'm responsible for bringing companies and other professors, researchers to campus to discuss partly what they do to help give our members a better idea of what they can You're do muted, in Mary industry Louise. and for their career. I was trying to be so proper, keeping my muted while I was uh, listening to everyone else. Um, I so my name is Mary Louise Dowd. <laughs> I'm a student services uh, administrator for the chemical and biological engineering department um, and uh, so I would answer any questions that you have on um, the procedures that you go through during your time here with dealing with the other functions of the uh, institute. Great. I'm Corey Woodcock. I'm a lecturer here in the chemical uh, engineering department. Um, I've been a lecturer for the past three years. I also graduated from RPI. So um, if you have any questions, I can probably answer questions about being a student, about being a graduate student, or about being a faculty member here at RPI. Um, and I will also be primarily delivering this uh, presentation to you. So I'll look forward to uh, talking with all of you for the next uh, half hour or so. Ron, maybe you're also on mute. Can you, uh, there we go. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, hi, this is Nihat Baisal. Uh, I'm a professor of practice as well, and I am teaching a capstone design course and some other courses in the department. I'm also a parent. My son is a senior in the ECSE department, so I can answer uh, some of the questions from the parent side as well. Uh, dear students, welcome. Uh, my name is Vidya Chakrapani. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the chemical engineering department. Uh, actually, my research is on semiconductor electrochemistry. So some examples are solar energy, lithium ion batteries. So if you guys are interested in, you know, opportunities at RPI, research opportunities or, you know, questions about teaching, I'll be more than happy to answer. Um, yeah, thanks.
Great. So at this point, the faculty are all going to stop broadcasting. Um, and what that should do is make the presentation a little bit larger and easier to see. So there we have it. And we will get right into our welcome webinar. So uh, as Professor Plosky just mentioned, chemical engineering overview will come first. We'll talk about chemical engineering at RPI and then what you can look forward to uh, after you get through RPI and some of the prospects that will be available out there. So first we'll go over an engineering overview. Um, and I like to start with this because I've worked with a lot of uh, very junior chemical engineers, um, people just coming in from high school. And it turns out that uh, quite often people not sure exactly what a chemical engineer does, right? It's like, I wanna get into chemical engineering, but unless you have a relative in chemical engineering, which is very uh, common, um, or you know somebody in chemical engineering, it can be hard to know exactly how you define a chemical engineer. So I have these definitions here for you. I'm not gonna go through and read them uh, verbatim, but overall, a chemical engineer takes something that you can find in nature and transforms it into a useful commodity. As a very general statement, I would say that is what chemical engineering is all about. And so you can see, you can read through these definitions. What can we make then? What do people use on a daily basis, right? Paper, petrochemicals, gasoline, food, right? We make lots of different foods, specialty chemicals, drugs, um, biological uh, resources and chemicals. Um, so really chemical engineers, uh, a well-trained chemical engineer from RPI can do just about anything. So generally, again, if it's not found in nature, it was probably made by a chemical engineer. And certainly anything that we find produced in mass scale and mass quantity and continuously is what we would call this, is gonna be produced by a chemical engineer. Um, chemical engineering is very exciting because if you're kind of like me and you don't necessarily want to start limiting the scope of what you can do as an engineer, then you can choose something like chemical engineering which allows you to go into almost any field, I would say, except for maybe computer programming, right? We're not gonna teach you extensively how to write code, but if you wanna go work in the environment and try to clean up the environment, if you wanna go develop a vaccine for the coronavirus, if you want to get into petrol or alternative energies, right? If you wanna start fixing some of these problems that we have in the world, you can do it as a chemi. Right? You can take jobs from some of these other engineers, quite frankly, as a chemi, where you know I would not expect a, a, an environmental engineer maybe to be able to come and step in and take the role of a chemi. I would expect the, a chemi to be able to fit right into that role as an environmental engineer and pick up and do a great job. So um, that it's very exciting, you know, if you don't want to start limiting yourself as an engineer. Um, how big is the department? I usually have a number here, but uh, in today's landscape that is uh, continually changing, we hope that you guys get excited about chemical engineering and end up joining us and um, seeing what we can do and what we can produce and how we can improve this world, right? We can improve the human condition uh, as chemical engineers. Um, and what types of activities go on? Some really fun activities. Of course, there's learning. Of course, engineering is not easy, right? So of course, there's a lot of work, uh, but we do a lot of research. We try to get undergraduates involved in research with the faculty. We have graduate level research. We have research faculty that devote their lives to making the world a better place, right? Um, competition, some really fun ones. We have a chemi car competition. So the AKI members that we just heard from in the beginning, we also have a chemi car group. And what they do is they make a little robotic car that's powered by some sort of chemical reaction. And we go to national competitions with that. Um, uh, another competition, something fun that happened this past spring, we ran a biggest meme on campus uh, campaign. Right. And so it was a fundraising campaign, ultimately, just to try to try to do some good and raise some money for some charities. But it was a really fun opportunity to interact with the students and for um, me to uh, participate in this fundraising campaign where I had uh, uh, students working with me. And it was really fun. It was really to see who is the most meme worthy um, uh, faculty member on campus. Um, and career planning services. Ultimately, we want you to learn. We want to have fun, but we want you to have a job when you get out of here. We want you to be paid well, and we want you to be successful in life. And that's gonna be our main goal. 
Um, job opportunities, we'll get into that later on. Uh, that'll come at the end. We'll look at different job opportunities, places that our students typically get internships at, and some of the, the, the career potentials that you might have um, at the, in the third section of this presentation. So what do you actually do? Let's say you go through and, and you become a chemical engineer. What could you possibly expect to be doing, right? So you're going to take the math that you learn, the science, the biology, the chemistry, and try to solve problems that are posed on mankind, right? Like I said before, we want to improve the human condition. So at one point we thought, well, gasoline would help everybody, right? Because then we can get around more efficiently. And at this point, we're saying, well, maybe we should start cleaning up some of the gases, right? And chemical engineers are involved in gas phase separations and say, how do you pull carbon uh, monoxide and carbon dioxide from the environment? Um, and uh, that might be kind of where we're at now more than trying to produce gasoline. But we do have uh, recent graduates that have gone off to um, work in the petrol industry, work in alternative fuel industry, all sorts of industries. Um, design processes and equipment. So chemical engineers are also called process engineers, right? We need to understand how you take a raw material, separate it at a molecular level, reassemble it into something useful, and then make that a commodity. And then how do you do this continuously to produce lots and lots of a product that lots and lots of people will use? So some things that uh, chemical engineers have produced for us, vaccines, a uh, graduate student that I just recently graduated, and I mean within uh, two months, is off and is a now a lead vaccine developer for Merck. And you better believe that they're gonna be concerned with uh, novel uh, coronaviruses, uh, including what we're dealing with now, but um, really taking a leading role in developing the vaccines that might help us one day, right? Uh, these uh, Beyond Burgers, Beyond Meat things were also uh, created by a chemical engineer. Um, we have, of course, in the petrol industry, refinement of crude oil all the way to the stage of being something useful, right? Gasoline. Um, uh, cosmetic industry, actually. We have a very, very decent fraction of students who uh, want to and end up going into cosmetics. Um, diapers, right? You need to learn how to manufacture a material that's absorbent, that is not going to irritate the skin. Um, there's a, a lot of chemical engineering that goes into the commodities that we use that we may not even think about how it ends up in the box, in the store, and ultimately in our homes being used. Um, and of course, biological systems and food products uh, are all, uh, and, and some of the uh, the food that lasts a really long time suspiciously, uh, you can thank chemical engineers for, right? Like the Pringles that'll last forever. <laughs> um, uh, and what do you need to know? So I kind of touched on this, but we really need to know how to rip things apart at the molecular level, right? And not rip them apart, but maybe more surgically uh, dissemble things and then reassemble them in a way that's useful. Right. So you can think about CRISPR technology and that sort of thing that might fall more in the biological engineering end of things. Um, how to take advantage on the note of biological things, biological reactions. Does nature do something already that we want to take advantage of, like fermentation? Scale up. This is a big, big part of chemical engineering, how to scale up or down a process. Because let's say our graduate student who's now a lead vaccine developer for Merck, uh, is going to develop a vaccine on a bench top, but now I can't sit here and mix up in a little flask enough vaccine for everybody in the world. So how do I then take this, scale it up and produce that same vaccine in a scale that will actually be useful for people, right? That's, so that's scale up and scale down. And market needs, of course, of course, of course, are going to be driving what we do as chemical engineers. Unfortunately, you know, we like to uh, improve the condition for mankind, but we are uh, slaves to the dollar, ultimately, right? All of us. So let's see. Traditional chemical engineering, scale up. How do I take what the chemist does in the lab bench and end up producing something in a massive scale. And so I would tend to, if we look at the right over here, some of the things that we like to scale up, we can kind of split that out into what we call intermediates. 
and say consumable products, right? So you might not necessarily go to the store and buy ethylene or benzene. That's an intermediate product. So we can take a raw product, create an intermediate product and sell that to other manufacturing facilities. Or we can work in the downstream processing, take those intermediates and produce something that we're actually going to throw on the shelf, shampoo or something that has silicon in it, right? Momentum is a massive employer and, uh, and offers us a lot of internships for our students. And they work with silicon, right? They work with all types of silicons. They take it from a raw stage and actually they take it from a raw material to a final product in some cases. But here's some examples of things that you can produce uh, in a scaled up way as a chemical engineer. All right, and I'll go over an example next. So I like to actually make this kind of uh, uh, make sense in a practical way. So let's think about what we can do with waste oil, right? We cook with oil and now we have all this uh, kind of used oil. It's contaminated. It's kind of dirty. And so what do we do with it, right? Do we dump it down the sink? Hopefully your parents have told you, no, you don't dump the oil down the sink, right? It's going to overload the waste treatment system. It's going to uh, ruin your plumbing. It's going to ruin the uh, environment if we start dumping oil uh, into the environment, right? Again, throw it in the trash then maybe. Then maybe that's the answer. Throw it in a tin can, throw it in the trash. Um, but again, we're, we're then putting that oil into the ground ultimately, right? If that container breaks open and leaks, um, and again, we're going to start overloading the landfills in that case. So as chemical engineers, what can we do? There must be some other option. Well, we can develop a process. As process engineers, as chemical engineers, we can take these vegetable oils, look at what they are at a molecular level, go through some processing, some transsterification, some glycerin refining, uh, recover some products and reuse. So you see a loop within here where we can take a waste product throw it through a side stream and either produce a secondary product or use it to help with our transterification process in this case. And ultimately what we can do is make soap with this dirty oil, right? We don't need to throw it in the landfill and we don't need to throw it in, uh, down our sink. We can make it into a useful commodity or we can refine this into a biodiesel. And this is an actual lab you'll do if you're at RPI is make a little container of biodiesel. Very cool, huh? So um, this is a nice example of how we can take something that can be very harmful to our environment and as chemical engineers look at it, use our knowledge of chemistry, of, um, of physics and science and what we learn as chemical engineers and throw this into a process and figure out what we can do with it, right? And that's the whole goal as a chemical engineer. And in fact, as your capstone, this would make a fine capstone project you are actually going to be asked to design a process of some sort. And it's a very cool thing to see at the end when you guys are actually capable of designing one of these processes and you talk to us about it. We have a competition at the end um, and it's a very fun time for the students. It's a fun time for the faculty. It's really cool. All right, and actually that concludes the first uh, third of this presentation to kind of introduce you to chemical engineering and let you know what chemical engineers do um, a, in uh, academia, and B, as a career choice. So next up is going to be chemical engineering at RPI. So while you're at RPI, what are you expected to do? What kind of things go on? What does your curriculum look like, right? What classes are you going to have to sit through? And that's what we're going to answer in this section. So here is a nice pie chart breakdown of the courses you'll take as a chemical engineer. Of course, it's a four-year degree. You need to uh, have some communication skills. You need to develop some very applied skills. You interact with many different disciplines. You can see, as I've been describing chemical engineering as a very liberal form of engineering, that means you're gonna end up working with many, many, many different engineers from different industries. And you have to be able to say, speak like an engineer, adopt the language and communicate effectively. Um, and, uh, and, and do some troubleshooting, of course. But let's look at this pie chart then. So 33% or about a third of your courses, 32%, are going to be actual chemical engineering courses. You have a nice big slice here, about 10%, that's going to be your free electives. What are you interested in? And this is a chance for you to say, if you want to go and develop vaccines, take biological courses here. 
right? Take some biomed courses, take some other courses that have to do with biological systems, drug development, and that sort of thing, right? You have 10% of your schedule is really open for you to decide what you want to do. If you want to pursue a minor, there's your opportunity to start uh, including some of the classes and the course credits to build towards that minor. We do uh, force you through a small section of uh, professional development. Um, of course, it's important. We do our best as uh, academic advisors, faculty advisors, to make sure that you uh, are acting professionally and you get a job at the end of this. Again, we really do put forth a lot of effort into making sure that at the end of this, you're having a career uh, that is successful. Has courses, that's uh, humanities, arts, social sciences, make sure that you're well-rounded. You can't just focus on the math and just focus on the science. We also need you to be uh, learning about social sciences, society, and be a good member of, of the community. Uh, math, of course, you're gonna take a lot of math courses early on in your career, and that's gonna build that mathematical foundation to get to those capstone courses. Uh, physics, again, that physics, math, chemistry, those are your basic one-on-one courses. Those generally will happen in your earlier time as a student. Uh, biology and other engineering. So I guess that kind of all falls into that same category, right? You're going to have to take some other types of engineering courses. Um, and again, we want you to be well-rounded. We don't want you to only know about chemical engineering and nothing else, right? We need you to be a well-rounded person. You're going to work in many different industries. So... Um, Really, we're developing uh, developing this curriculum to have you be a well-rounded engineer that can work pretty much anywhere. So let's take a look at the actual curriculum here. The courses that you're going to see in red are going to be the actual chemical engineering courses. So you see they have a course title that starts with C-H-M-E. So C-H-E-M, the next one down in your fall 2020 schedule here, that's chemistry. Math is math and phys is physics. So this is a representative schedule for who's coming in this fall, right? I did not get the schedule ready for next fall. Um, and as you can guess, the landscape is really developing and changing now. So um, that's yet to be seen. So I, I do have the schedule for this fall up here. So you can see you start with ICE. This course, Intro to Chemical Engineering, is again designed to introduce you to chemical engineers. We invite a plethora of chemical engineers who work in industry, generally chemical engineers that have graduated from RPI, and they come and talk to you, tell you about what they do on a daily basis. They'll talk to you about the classes that they took at RPI, what was really important to them, right? What classes you should really try to remember and take with you. Um, and, uh, and that's all of them, of course, right? It's, it's all of them. Um, but they'll, they come and really give you an even better idea of what they do in industry, right? This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis as a chemical engineer. And we get people from New York State uh, Environmental Conservation. Um, we get people from uh, Finch Prime Papers. The CFO is actually a chemical engineer, right? The chief financial officer there. Go figure. Um, we get people from Regeneron, which is a, a pharmaceutical company, um, from Momentiv, uh, and, and many, many other industries to come and talk about what they do as chemical engineers. Um, then you go through, and like I said, in your first few semesters here, you really take, take on and tackle your chemistry, math, physics, biology. Uh, this is engineering, core engineering is ENGR, right? And so you have chemistry, calculus, physics, kind of your basic stuff, a half selective that's humanities, arts, social, social sciences. Um, and then by the spring of 2021, you're taking uh, molecular biology, IEA is intro to engineering analysis. You're gonna do uh, some linear algebra, learn about uh, vector math and that sort of stuff. Um, CAD and communications is extremely important. Right? We need to be able to draw technical diagrams and communicate with our fellow engineers. Um, calculus 2 and another half selective. All right, then you get into your real first, I would say, chemical engineering course is going to be MEBL, engineering, uh, chemical engineering thermodynamics. So your first real taste of chemical engineering comes a year into your curriculum, and it's going to be a thermodynamics course. You're also going to finish up with your chemistry courses that you've been taking, professional development, uh, differential equations. That's another math. That's kind of your final. For many of you, that'll be your final math course. Uh, physics 2. 
And as you can see, we start transitioning to more and more of the core chemical engineering courses as you move through your time here, your curriculum, right? You're pretty much done with chemistry after organic chemistry two. Mao is, they call it ENGR. It's almost like another math course. It's a statistics course um, and you have an elective. But now here we have, um, this is pretty much thermodynamics two, energy, entropy, and equilibrium. And uh, intro to computational chemical engineering is a new course we've developed. Uh, we take a lot of feedback from the students. Our, sorry, my video cut out for one second. Our curriculum is changing. It's very amorphous and it's based on the feedback we get from the undergrads, to be quite frank. So we got feedback from the undergrads that said the general engineering um, computational course isn't very applicable to chemical engineering. And many of them were saying this. And so we listened. We said, well, if this isn't helping you and if it's not helping you in your careers and it's not helping you with your chemical engineering, then we need to offer you something else. And that's how this course was born. Um, and so moving on to your, your last two years here, um, we do require the art semester now. So I hope most of you or all of you are aware of that. So we do have students going through a summer course right now with us. Um, and this is set up to be uh, a summer 2022 course. And then you have a choice of what semester you want to be back uh, as far as your art semester. I think that'll be good to talk about if we have questions at the end. Um, I'm going to try to get through the slides so we have time for Q&A at the end. But that is probably where we can discuss more of the art semester and arch planning. Um, but transport phenomena, this is what I teach. Uh, um, and this is about how we actually go from thermodynamic state one to thermodynamic state two. So when we perturb an equilibrium um, in thermodynamics, we kind of just look at, well, we start at state one and we say dump in a certain amount of energy into the system and we're gonna end up at state two. But now we can think about really how effective is our process? Can we move from state one to state two very fast and effectively or not so fast and effectively? Um, transport phenomena deals with heat, mass, momentum, and charge transport. It really is how you move things around in space and in time. Um, I could go on for a long time about transport phenomena, so I won't. Um, but uh, process uh, dynamics and control is our feedbacks kind of uh, control course. Um, it, you're going to deal with uh, process control. So how if you end up working in a nuclear reactor and things start going wrong, what sort of processes are there in place to control this? Um, first of all, how do you control the process on a day-to-day -day basis so that nothing ends up going wrong? But then when you have a perturbation in the system, how is your process controlled so that it returns back to an equilibrium state instead of uh, asymptotically going off somewhere where you don't want it, right? It, causing an explosion or something like that. Uh, ModTech is a uh, chemistry um, lab-based course, and then you have a Hass elective. Um, once you uh, come back from your semester away, um, you're going to take Transport Phenomena 2, which is a continuation of transport. Um, microscopic Physical Chemistry, I, uh, that's another lab-based course. Hass elective, free elective, and professional development. So you'll see we're hitting you with more of the chemical engineering courses, but you're also ending up having a little more liberty with your schedule towards the end of the curriculum. So you can figure out in the first, say, three years what you are more interested in as a chemi. And then you have these free electives, these Hass electives, uh, another free elective here and a free elective here to really focus in on what's interesting to you. You should have an idea by your senior year what in chemical engineering is more interesting or less interesting. And you should be able to then take those free electives and mold them to uh, really tailor this curriculum to what you want to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then uh, you can see your first uh, semester of your senior year is a lot of heavy, heavy chemical engineering. We're done with all our chemistry and math, and it's time to really focus in on the chemical engineering, chemical engineering lab, where we're going to go through professional writing and unit operations, right? All, how do you separate things? What are the different processes involved? What different types of machines do we have? Or what we call equipment, right? What kind of separations equipment do we have available to us? Is it a distillation column? Is it a chromatography column? Is it a membrane? Um, but we have different tools that we use as chemical engineers to create these molecular transformations. And then you'll learn about in chemical engineering separations, uh, Chemi 4040. 
right? So you learn about this equipment in SEPS, then you'll go and use the equipment in engineering lab. And reactor design is also where you're going to learn about more of the reaction equipment. So separation equipment and reaction equipment. Um, and again, an elective, this one just has to be done in our department. So it just means this needs to be a chemical engineering course, but it's one that you choose and that you want to do. Finally, you're almost done. You're ready to graduate. We have another lab for you to make sure you've had a lot of experience with the equipment that you're going to use out in industry. You've seen it. You've got to play with it. Um, and here you can have the choice of taking a bioprocessing lab. If that's more interesting to you, you know you want to go into pharmaceuticals, you want to go into drug development, vaccine development, then you can choose bioprocessing lab and get exposed to some of that equipment. Chemical process design, that's where you actually have to design a whole process in a chemical plant to take something from a raw material, or I think possibly you can choose an intermediate and produce uh, a consumable or you can go to the upstream processing, take a raw material and produce some intermediates. Uh, and then we have professional development, electives and electives to let you graduate, right? So that is your entire uh, curriculum, four years of chemical engineering. On the next slide here, I've just summarized all of our capstone courses. So these are all of the really hardcore chemical engineering courses, right? You start with, uh, material and energy balances, thermodynamics, and computations. Then you get into transport phenomena, how to control these processes, what kind of equipment we use as chemical engineers, and then you get to kind of play with it and design a whole process. Uh, the faculty that we have here at RPI are extremely uh, proficient and uh, um, immensely humbling, quite frankly, if I'm gonna be very, very honest, right? Um, I can't get a big head even if I have a PhD and even uh, how successful I am because you can see uh, our faculty, uh, the pedigree here is amazing. We uh, have, uh, Professor Plosky is still teaching here. He's produced this book in Transport Phenomena Fundamentals. Uh, Van Ness and Abbott have written a chemical engineering thermodynamics book that's used all over the world. Right. Nauman is a retired uh, faculty member writing this book on chemical uh, reactor design and optimization and scale up. Uh, Beckett is still with us. He's teaching process control. He's an expert in the field. You see, he has two books on the subject. Uh, and Harry Bungay is uh, a retired faculty member, um, but he also has a wonderful book on environmental systems engineering. So uh, really world class, top notch faculty that we have uh, here to teach you. Um, not only do we have uh, amazing uh, uh, accomplished faculty, but our faculty are also very down to earth and love working with undergrad students. So RPI does this thing, the last lecture series. Some of you may be familiar with uh, Randy Pausch, who unfortunately passed away, but he was um, famous for kind of giving a last lecture. And the idea was if you were able to just kind of give one last lecture, what would it be? Because he found he was terminally ill and he did have one last lecture. Um, uh, but not, uh, aside from that grim note, um, what we've done is adopted this as a series at RPI where graduating seniors vote on who they want to hear before they graduate. So not quite as grim as that first story, but so the students choose who they want to hear from before they graduate for one last lecture. And for two years in a row, chemical engineering faculty have been chosen. Right, Ron Hedden and myself for the past two years have been selected. And this is a school-wide event. This isn't uh, necessarily restricted to engineering or chemical engineering, but out of all the faculty that RPI has, right, in the past two years, two chemical engineering faculty have been selected. That says something about how we treat our students, how our students perceive us, and the kind of mutual respect that we give one another, right? And so that's something special too. All right, and that wraps up then our section two, and we'll get to the last section here, and we're making good time. So let's say what happens after we're done at RPI, what do you have to look forward to? Right. 
So I pulled together a couple of graphs. Uh, these are also available on our chemical engineering website, but these are the median annual wages for chemical engineers. And I think you can see some pretty impressive statistics here, right? These are all pretty current. And we see that chemical engineers not only make much, much more than the median annual wage of all occupations, but even if we look at engineers, we see that chemical engineers come out on top. We see chemical engineers earning potential is quite high, right? So I don't need to read you the numbers. You can see them here, but you certainly can expect to live a comfortable lifestyle after you graduate from RPI. Where do our chemical engineers go and work, right? So I've kind of split this slide up into bioprocessing and pharmaceuticals and what I would call more traditional um, chemical engineering, right? Oil and chemical, semiconductors, energy, kind of consumer goods, that whole scale up process. Uh, so ExxonMobil uh, has hired um, actually one of our great uh, chemies. We end up kind of making friends with a lot of our chemies. So uh, yeah, one of our, our really good students ended up going to ExxonMobil, uh, Schlumberger, uh, GE, that's part of the Momentive group, or they've split up, but they used to be connected, but GE and Momentive. Uh, Procter and Gamble, Intel for semiconductors, IBM. Um, these are all uh, companies that have been actively hiring our students. Millaport Sigma, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, uh, San Sanofi, Regeneron, Biogen. These are all companies that are, uh, again, actively working with us, offering our students internships and ultimately hiring our students. And we build a kind of network, right? Once they start hiring RPI students, they see what a good quality uh, employee they are, how well trained they are. And it builds up this kind of synergistic network where they want to hire more RPI students, right? And we have this nice synergy built up with them. One more slide on local companies now, because a lot of times students want to find internships near RPI. And so we put together a list of all of our local companies uh, hiring RPI students. And also, this is where we get a lot of those speakers. Remember, I talked about that ICE course, Intro to um, Chemical Engineering. We get a lot of the speakers from these companies. This is where they come from to talk to us about what they're doing on a day to day basis as chemical engineers. So in the last two minutes here. I wanted to show you here's our class of 2019. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get a group shot like this of the class of 2020. We went right into uh, the COVID state. So um, we weren't able to kind of get all the graduates together. We like to have a big dinner to celebrate all of our chemical engineering graduates. It's a really great time. Again, our faculty and the students relationship, it's special. It's, it's definitely different than a lot of departments. And um, it really is unique. It's something that I haven't really experienced somewhere else. So even though we couldn't have a big dinner for them and do a big award ceremony, um, we did our best. And our department pulled together a yearbook for this class. Uh, that's not something we typically do, but we wanted to give the students, you see some personal notes that we've written to the students there. You see uh, the pictures that we've gotten. We end up, again, being very close to our students over the four years that we work with them. So uh, in lieu of having that wonderful dinner and celebration, we had a virtual celebration and we had a yearbook prepared for them. And um, we've been doing an excellent job, I must say, to give ourselves a pat on the back of pivoting to this kind of remote learning. And this fall, we're going to be doing some remote and hybrid learning. And that's something that I didn't necessarily include in this presentation, but it's something we're prepared for um, and that we're doing very well. You heard that Ron uh, Hedden has been developing virtual reality experiments. So you're actually gonna run an experiment in a virtual reality environment, not some pre-canned video, not some sort of silly video game, but a scientific experiment that has results, real results in a virtual environment. How cool is that? That's really cool. We're also doing things like running virtual reality labs, uh, other than the virtual reality labs, running virtual labs, where if we have a lab experiment, maybe we can run a simulation on that videotaping experiments to show students how the, the situation runs in case we can't be on campus. But we have a lot of protocol in place, a lot of backup plans, and uh, we're very well prepared to teach online, hybrid, and in person. So with that, we're at 2.40 now, 
And what we wanted to do is kind of end the presentation at this point. And um, I'm going to leave this slide up. And here's Greg. And I'm going to turn off my broadcast for a second. Oh, all right. Oh, leave it on, Corey. Yeah, I would leave it on. Leave it on because I want since you you've talked, we want to have you answer some questions here. So we will be stopping just before three o'clock here officially. But I know chemical uh, and biological engineering um, they love doing breakout rooms. So if you are interested in having more personal conversations um, with the faculty and the students that introduce themselves at the beginning of the presentation, feel free to do that after we're done here, um, and then you can go right into their individual meeting room. So again, you just kind of type in the um, the link here, and I'll even type it into the chat as, as Corey starts answering a question. Um, and then you can just add in the name of the person you would like to meet um, with. But Corey, if you could just answer a couple to. of questions here before we uh, officially close the webinar. Yeah, what a um, like couple quick uh, stat ones. What is the average student to faculty ratio? All right, so our in the class sizes now. Department? I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot of what my current class sizes are. Um, I have a class of 13 where we have two instructors. So you're talking about six students per instructor, right? I have a class of, in not chemical engineering, but I also teach, uh, and the point of us being very, um, say liberal arts of engineering, we teach in many different departments because we're capable of that. So I also teach in core engineering. I have a fluid mechanics class, which tends to be a larger class. There's about 70 students there and it's just me as an instructor. So there's actually a pretty broad range. Um, that's outside of chemical engineering, though. In chemical engineering, what you can expect if you come at this point, class sizes of probably about 30. That's what I'm going to guess is a best estimate, 30 to 35 for one or two instructors. But a lot of classes you'll find are half that size, about 15 per instructor or 15 per two instructors. Um, we're finding that when we teach online, it's somewhat better if we can afford the faculty to have two instructors per class because it creates more interaction, more opportunity for, um, for feedback from the instructors and, uh, and, and from the students to actually be able to answer some of their questions. So I would say right now, if I look at my chemi courses, I have about 13 to 30 students per per class. Awesome. Um, what percentage of students um, graduate from Kemi in four years. I know we don't report a four year as an institution because we have a lot of students that are doing our co-term programs or taking an additional semester. Uh, the co-term is our five year bachelor's master's. I answered a question about that in the chat. Um, so they don't technically graduate in four years. So a, a good chunk of our population wouldn't fit into that, even though they're some of our best and brightest. So our six year graduation rate is, uh, I don't have any better numbers than that. No, uh, I, I wouldn't. That's yeah. Different for I'm not exactly. Yeah, we do. Yeah, those numbers we try to keep more more general. Um, this is a quick one for me. What's RPS acceptance rate? Usually about forty to forty five percent, depending on the year. Uh, but now a couple good uh, chem e questions. What's the difference between courses and possible career paths between chemistry? Uh, well, chemistry all right. So and a I degree? not sure that I can speak too much on chemistry, but for chemical engineering, you can expect to work with chemists for sure. So a lot of uh, what, what can happen is the chemist and your knowledge of chemistry can help develop some of these new products or um, new materials, novel materials. Um, and um, I'm not sure I can speak too much yeah, on, on the chemistry side of things, but um, as a chemical engineer, you are not a chemist. If chemistry is really, really what you're interested in, um, that is different than chemical engineering. We really want to take our knowledge of chemistry and produce a product on a mass scale. I don't think chemists are necessarily interested in producing a product. They're interested in learning about the molecular transformations that can produce a novel material. But I'm not sure that they ever take that and say, well, now how can I make this on a mass scale? And how can I produce this as a commodity? I think that's a big difference between chemistry and chemical engineering. So um, if you really like that part of thinking about the molecule, how you can pull the molecule apart, uh, and are not really interested in producing things, then that's more chemistry. 
Um, and I think if you really are interested in producing things, uh, then you're thinking more about chemical engineering. So I, I'm. Oh, and it looks, it looks like it looks like Ron's in the chat answering some of these as well. So you know, for he says for a chemical engineering compared to chemistry, he emphasizes more on math and computers, and it has higher sal salaries on average, which is always a good thing to hear. Um, and then uh, talking about the difference between because that was another question we had about the difference between a chem chemistry chemical engineering and being a chemistry uh, researcher. Right. Um, and Ron is answering those as, as well. So um, fantastic. Um, here's another one. Um, are chemical engineering students able to narrow on career specific courses or minors later at their time at RPI? I'm pretty sure you answered this. As yeah, you absolutely. Going through, uh, as you can see through the curriculum, towards the end of your curriculum, we leave a lot of open space for you to kind of craft your curriculum towards what you want to do. As you can see, or you've heard, chemical engineers do everything, right? They do anything and everything. And so really that means uh, over your first two to three years, you should be kind of, uh, you know, communicating with other chemies, learning about what chemies do, and starting to narrow down your focus. Yeah, and saying, do I want to say go off into pharmaceuticals? And if I do that, am I more interested in vaccine development? Am I more interested in um, uh, novel materials, biomaterials and 3D printed biomaterials? Um, or am I more interested in the petrol industry? Maybe that's still interesting to me and I want to know if we can produce uh, a gasoline more efficiently or uh, possibly you're interested in environmental remediation. And you can go take some courses in environmental engineering and really focus yourself and become um, a, a specialist in separations, right? And especially maybe gas phase separations or liquid phase separations so we can clean out the sea or clean out the air. Um, but yes, you do have a lot of opportunity to tailor your schedule and that comes more towards the end of your academic uh, time. Awesome. Um, so again, you kind of answer. You kind of were heading towards this direction, but uh, what are some? Do we have a concentration in, in pharmaceuticals? Right now, and, and can you don't go over some of the concentrations a specific that, that concentration. It's something that we've talked about as faculty, and um, we started looking into the logistics of how to do it, and um, we weren't sure what the say cost benefit analysis would have been, or what 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 really would have been the benefit compared to how much more difficult it would be to go and make an official kind of minor and make um, an official track. So it is, it has been something we've discussed. Um, at this point, we don't have an official track. Say you're not going to go on a, um, a, a vaccine track or something like that, or pharmaceutical track, but that is more for you to um, say, work these courses into your curriculum. And then once you are applying for a job, you really emphasize that, right? You say, well, I'm a chemical engineer, but I've taken, you know, four courses in uh, farm, um, uh, bio, biomedical engineering. And so I really want to start working for Merck and start developing vaccines, right? And so that's how you, um, without say having a track would work in those courses and end up having a focus that's not necessarily a track. Yeah, and, and again, Ron is in here putting, adding even more detail, which which is I great. I would certainly invite Ron um, to, so uh, to turn about, on the mic and camera um, and come uh, answer. About, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, if you'd like to come on a broadcast, feel free. We do have time for one or two more questions Please. here. Um, so um, as a chemical engineer, uh, are you able to be involved in research in the space uh, yes. area? Uh, I know we're doing a lot of research in aeronautical engineering and professor and, and, uh, and professor Plosky has sent many experiments up into outer area. space. Yep. He works closely with NASA. I work closely with him. We do research. Um, some of his heat pipes and heat sinks have been on the international space station. Yes, absolutely. There's opportunity. Uh, SpaceX was going to come and interview asked specifically to talk to RPI chemies, right? They wrote us an email SpaceX and said, Hey, we want to come to campus and interview RPI chemies, you know, and presumably to do on-site job. Well, yes, to do on-site job interviews, but presumably to hire somebody, right? And so, I mean, we worked with NASA. Uh, SpaceX was very interested in coming. Unfortunately, we were setting a date. We set a date for them to come. And the next week we went into COVID. Yes, it was March of this past year that they asked if they could come in and do some <laughs> on-site interviews. 
So absolutely, there is opportunity in aerospace, uh, SpaceX, NASA. Yes, definitely, 100%. Um, all right, we got time for a couple. We have two more questions in the queue here. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get to both before we hop out into your breakout rooms. Um, can dual majoring in mechanical and chemical engineering work um, and will it provide more opportunities? We got a couple, we always get a couple questions about dual majoring. Um, and, and the answer I always hear from the advisors is if it makes sense, it works. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work. Do you guys have any uh, input on that? Oh, you're uh, silent. Ron or Corey? Yeah, you're muted, Ron. That's Corey's uh, question to answer for sure, because he was a Mechie uh, when he was an undergraduate. But uh, um, my, just generically speaking, there's a bunch of questions going by in the chat about, can I specialize in polymers? Can I specialize in pharma? Can I take chemi and Mechie? And all, all these questions going through about, um, you know, uh, certificates or specializations in certain areas. You, you can take some extra courses to learn a little bit more about an area, but it's not really necessary to get into those areas for a career. Um, the companies that hire our uh, graduates for pharmaceuticals, they give internships to many of them. And you get specialized training when you do the internship during the summer or your semester off from the arch. And then you already know a little bit about what the company does. And uh, they provide training to new employees. Um, I'm a person that spent years and years working in the polymers area, and I was actually on the faculty in a materials department running polymers research group. So um, uh, I took a few polymer classes as an undergraduate, but it was not necessary to get into that area. Uh, a plastics company or a you know, high-tech polymers company that wants to hire graduates, they're going to offer internships and look for people that are going to be a good fit for the company that have a lot of tal talent to offer. And they're just like everybody else, they're looking for good people. And when you join the company, they give you the specialized training that you need to succeed at that particular company, right? So a good solid uh, fundamental grounding in chemical engineering is what you want. And yes, there are some elective courses, but you don't have to have a double major or 35 credits of courses in some sp specialized area to get a job in that area. It just uh, isn't necessary. Perfect. And then we do have one more question uh, in the queue, and I want to make sure we get it done um, before we again break out. Again, feel free to break out into, into Cora's room or to Ron's room or Mary Louise or uh, uh, any of the other faculty that are, are, are available. Um, but this question is about um, pre-med. Uh, would courses be offered to be considered pre-med courses uh, if you want to go to med school? So we do have a pre-med track is what it's called, and you kind of add it on and additionally, and you get a pre-health uh, advisor. And that pre-health advisor is there to guide you getting into the right medical school. And we call it pre-health because you most students will go pre-med to go to medical school, but some students will go to dentistry school. Some students will go to PT school or OT school or whatever it may be. So, um, yes, it is a great possibility there. Does anyone have anything to add to that? That was the last question in the queue. One of our um, most recent graduates, uh, Actually, I mean, RPI has a lot of choices for, um, for, for um, you know, going into medicine after your degree program. But uh, we had a student just two years ago go to uh, Penn to uh, join the medical school. So it's absolutely possible. And I mean, he's not the only one, but I just, you know, I happen to remember that, that uh, I had an email from him recently. I just happen to remember that he, he was, uh, that, that he, you know, went off to Penn after chemical engineering because um you know he had a, he had a bunch of other choices that was what he chose to do but so it's yeah and that's possible. again with our pre-health track most students think they have to be in biology or, or chemistry or whatever but you can be in any program so chemical engineering is a great start for that if that's something you're interested in um i'm not seeing any more questions in the queue here so Corey and ron i, I don't know if you guys want to head off into your individual meeting rooms and i'll kind of wrap up here um so i thank you all for joining our webinar Corey. thank you for the presentation ron thank you for your answers all, all the faculty and students thank Thank you for being here to answer the questions. Um, if you are interested in meeting with the faculty or students, feel free to join their meeting rooms. Again, I've put the beginning of the link into the chat, um, and then you just have to put these individual names. And again, we'll leave them up here. So just copy and paste that uh, beginning of the link, and then just type in those those names. So it would be, you know, for Corey, it would be Wood CC2. 
uh, for Ron, it's H-E-D-D-E-R. Uh, so feel free to throw it in there. Uh, I also put my email in there. So if you have any more questions that you'd want to ask, if you don't have time to head off to the breakout rooms, feel free to send me any of those uh, questions and I can get you those answers uh, from chemical engineering. And if you have a question for the students, they'll be in uh, the yep. room with me, uh, Dowd M3. So, Perfect. Um, um, so again, I want to wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, Corey, Ron, everyone else, thank you for, for giving your wonderful information about chemical engineering at Rensselaer. Uh, and everyone, enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe.